Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having a great uh, week. Hope you're having a still great start to your day. Uh, I'm not going to be long. I want to remind you that we are still uh, raising funds for the work we do in the community, especially with the Black Man Lead uh, Rite of Passage Initiative and the wraparound services we also offer to black men uh, up to the age of 30 and in many times beyond. The information you need to support what we do will be in the description box. Uh, act accordingly. So, everybody's talking about uh, what Channing Crowder said on the pivot concerning Russell Wilson. Uh, it's actually not a new conversation. This conversation has been going on since Sierra got with Russell. Uh, less than a year after breaking up with Future. Now, the, um, from what I gather, uh, Channing what happened to um, uh, Channing is on a uh, podcast called The pivot with a couple of other former NFL players, uh, Ryan Clark and uh, former running back, oh man, Fred Taylor. And normally they have some real good conversations. They uh, have some good points. Now I'll admit that Channing has some good points on many of the topics that they discuss. Um, This is not a new conversation. This has been going on, like I said, since Sierra got with Russell. Um, and everybody has had their opinion. Um, someone hit me up and told me that Channing had called Russell a simp. Well, that's not true. But I'm going to address the whole simp thing because many people have called him a simp. I'm going to address the simp thing, but I'm also going to talk about the square thing. Um, and I'm going to talk about where that comes from and why we're why we are even having this conversation because Channing's point was you don't leave future to get with a guy like Russell because Russell's a square. If Russell wasn't rich, um, she wouldn't be with him. Well, future's got dough too, so it's not that she's just, she was just with dude because he was a certain type. And yes. Um, Everybody has a type, but people tend to grow. People tend to develop. People tend to evolve. And if they're not evolved, the two aren't evolving at the same pace, that can be a problem. Uh, I think that at one point, future was something that Sierra could relate to coming out of the ATL. And uh, he was hot, but uh, based on what I know about it, before that was ever Russell Wilson, she she left Future for because Future was cheating, and that's Future's thing. Uh, you know, he can't keep himself in one place, um, and so she moved on. And when she moved on, eventually, less than a year later, she hooked up with Russell. Russell was a different type of dude uh, in many different ways, and Russell has his faults. Um, you know. Um, his background creates some problems for extremely pro-black people. But when we talk about how he's treating this one particular woman, um, the term from a lot of men uh, comes up simp. And then there's the square comment. I'm going to deal with the simp thing first because that's the thing that's thrown out the most. First of all, you have to understand the etymology and development of the word simp. Um, you know, now having grew up being having been born in the '60s and growing up in the '70s, uh, I understand. Now, the term "simp" has also been used in certain areas to reflect on the term "simpleton," but this definitely is not how we use it. The word "simp" is an, an a term in opposition to "pimp." So, if we're talking pimpology, then we're talking about uh, the idea where men are respected for their ability to manipulate and control 
and in many ways dominate, disrespect women. So we're talking about a level of misogyny that is extreme, and there is an, a group of men who live by that code, who respect that code, who think it's their job. It's real closely associated with being a player. Okay, so you you know you got pimps and players, and so their job isn't to partner with women. It is in some way to manipulate and control women, to benefit from women without, in many ways, giving much of themselves in return, and that's the game. So when they see a man giving to a woman and being a protector and making himself vulnerable and putting himself out there to them. He's a simp, the opposite of a pimp, the opposite of a player. He's out there, and the woman to them is winning because he's giving far more than they think he should. Now, that's the simple explanation for this. It's the simple explanation for this. And... Um, I could go way off into detail on what's going on, but what we have to understand is we have to decide how we want to be defined. And the fact that we have so many men that see simply treating a woman with respect and regard and showering her with what you are capable of showering her with as being a simp, uh, it goes to the point that we have failed uh, tremendously in developing young black men that can move in the roles that are necessary to build strong communities. We need our women protected. We need our women covered. Now, I'm not talking about fools. I'm not talking about people who can play, because trust me, there are women out there that are better players than men. There are women out there that are better manipulators than men. And we have to be honest about that if we're going to have this conversation that there are women out there that if you don't watch it, you will get taken. Hell, we got an NBA player, P.J. Washington, uh, they got took by Brittany uh, Brenner with the quickness. She got she had been chasing down celebrity athletes for a minute. She had shot at Cap. Matter of fact, she the one that set Cap off on this whole thing that he was doing uh, that p basically put him on the map outside of his playing career. Um, many people don't know that. But she couldn't nail him down. And she moved on a couple of other places. And eventually she had to go dig up somebody that was a lot younger than she was and she got pj washington um you know uh she couldn't get him without marriage but she got him with marriage and then you know after she gave birth within two weeks of giving birth she divorced him i don't know the whole story behind it but just knowing who she was and how she moved you can draw conclusions she's not the only one let me tell you and with professional athletes alone, there's an entire culture out there of women who are after the bag. I'm not saying expose your bag to anybody. What I'm saying is if you find somebody that you can partner with, if you find somebody that you say you love, if you find somebody that, uh, you know, brings something to you that you see to be valuable, whatever that is, everybody's different then there has to be an equal meeting at the table. And it doesn't have to be the same thing. You know, both people don't have to have the same income. Both people don't have to have, the, but there has to be something of value that, um, there has to be something of value that is coming uh, to each person that they respect and that they value. And then when you do that, you get a balance and it, it then there's something i believe that you know no first and foremost sierra has her own space her own business endeavors and whatever i don't know what her personal net worth is i didn't take the um time to even look it up uh but i know that she has her own business endeavors that she has her own career uh that she's not hurting for money so you know while russell is definitely paid and has a has the bag you know she's good so it's got to be more than that. I think that he showed her something that she probably hadn't seen before. She saw a side of life and a side of being respected, cared for, acknowledged, and truly loved by way of action, not just words. And it was different. And 
it took her in a path that she hadn't been down before. She's a different person if you haven't followed her. And I love the old Sierra. I did. But I, I, I absolutely adore the new Sierra. I, 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 and I see both still there. And she's who she is. And that I think that's what was special. He wasn't from where she was from. That wasn't his lane. That wasn't his world. But when he took her, he took her as she was. And they evolved together. She's giving it. He and, and now moving into this L7 thing. And for those of you who don't know L7, L7 is basically, however you want to put it, it's square. Okay. Something we used to say back in the day. This whole L7 thing. Well, let me tell you something. You know, it's cool to be up on things. It's cool to, to be aware of things. It's cool to know what's going on in the world, in, in, in different cultures, especially the cultures that you're going to be most closely associated with. That's all good. But at some point in time, you grow up. At some point in time, you see there's more than the block. At some point in time, you see there's more than the hustle. At some point in time, you see that there's even more than the bad, that there are some things in life that money can't buy, that there are some things that you want to experience. There's a way you want to live, and you evolve into it. The goal is a lot of us grew up in times where we weren't expected to make 18 because we were that hot-headed. We were out there doing what we were doing, and... It was just expected, man, that cat's going to meet a, a, a tragic end or he's going to end up in prison. But there's a light that comes on for many of us. There is this um, epiphany, so to speak, that we have and we evolve and we change and we become someone who can be a father, someone who can be a husband, someone who can be a, a, a an influence within the community. And those are the things that need to be cherished. Those are the things that need to be understood. You're not the same person at 40 that you are at 20. You're not the same person at 50 that you are at 40. And you're evolving. And again, Russell comes from a different background. So by the average brother standard, he would probably be considered square. I don't see square neg necessarily as being a negative thing, even though it may be thrown out there as negative. I just think it means that he probably isn't as on or down or hip or whatever term you want to use, um, you know, to what's going on uh, in that scene. And that's OK when it comes down to love. And I think that uh, what John Taylor said when Shannon Crowder said that, I think that should settle it. Sometimes a woman is just looking for peace. A, he said a woman definitely, you know, has a type, but sometimes a woman prefers peace. And I think that we have to respect that. I think that when you look at them, I think what I see personally, I think is genuine. I think it's authentic. They're enjoying one another. Uh, they're loving on one another. Uh, they're exploring two different worlds uh, simultaneously. And I think it's beautiful to me. I think we need to be more focused on uh, what's going on in um, this this situation between black men and black women and why we're where we are and why when a man uh, puts himself out there for a woman, he's considered to be a simp, um, even when he's married to her. <coughs> And we have to understand where that comes from. And we have to understand that there's a culture out there, an entire culture, uh, that doesn't value black women. And there is an entire culture out there that is extremely hot of women who are hostile towards black men. We have to be honest on both sides of that. But when we talk about that word simp, it's coming from that culture. It's coming from a culture that doesn't understand or cannot process a man doing for a woman at a certain level, a man put himself out there for a woman because that's not what pimps do. That's not what players do. Players are there to get. Players are there to serve themselves. Players will do only what they have to do to make sure they get their needs met. Men are there to serve. Men are there to protect. Men are there to cover. Men are there to provide. Men are there to fill a role. It doesn't mean that they're doing it on their own. It doesn't mean that they're out there and that woman is sitting at home or in the nail shop or in the mall all the time. But it does mean that they're taking the lead. 
it does mean that they have created a safe space and a safe environment for the women in their lives and for the children in their lives and that they have a sense of responsibility to themselves, their home, their family, and the community. And I think that's what we have to instill and that's one of the goals that we have at uh, the Odyssey Project, especially with Black Men Lead, is properly socializing black males to understand the importance that they have to the black community when they're operating in their role. And so that's my take on it. Uh, you guys have a great day, and I'm out of here. <laughs>